what is going on guys nick here back with another davinci resolve tutorial We've got a really exciting one for you guys today we're doing a cinematic title tutorial so something that you can use in maybe a short video that you're creating short film maybe a vlog and more importantly not only we're we going to show you how to create a little cinematic title but how to save it for later use so let's have a quick look at what we're going to create today let's open this bad boy up here very very spooky as you can see there we have this cool little title effect sort of you know comes in and then sort of randomly dissolves and blurs away and then disappears really good for like a horror movie hence the title the mist and i'm sure you guys can use your imagination as to what you could use this kind of a title for but the reason we're doing this particular tutorial is because you do learn a fair bit about how sort of text works in fusion now, for those of you that want to know where I get all this footage from, I do get it from, oh, hang on, sorry, this is just something I was Googling earlier, uh, pexels.com, not sponsored by them, but I do think that anyone, you know, doing video tutorials, it's great to get sort of just free footage from, so head on over to pexels.com, and yeah, that's where I got this sort of creepy footage from. So, let's jump into the tutorial. So, like I said, we are going to make it so that you can actually drag and drop this on any project whenever you want. So let's just show that quickly. So we're just gonna drag this footage down. Very cool. If we go to our effects library, down to titles, you can see down here, I've got my missed cinematic title. Just slap that on the top there. And you see here, we've got it sort of animating off. But what's even cooler is if I select it, you know, I can call it, you know, let's say like, oh, fucking learn to spell guys. Nice, that modern dude. And then what we can also do is we can scale it down and it is still going to randomly blur off and disappear by the end. And we can change the font. We can do whatever we want, change it to something different. We can adjust the tracking, however we want to do it. Maybe make it like a nice bright, dark, deep blood red color. And again, it's still going to blur off and disappear actually that looks kind of cool eh? that looks even more menacing than the first one we made so how do we create it well super easy so let's get rid of that and what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new fusion composition all right so well i guess first is you're going to want to go when you open davinci resolve going to create a new project jump in and then yeah we're going to go new fusion composition 24 frames a second is fine name it whatever you want cinematic title and we're gonna make it five seconds is fine uh, for a title, but depending on what you wanna do, maybe you wanna make it longer, but five seconds should be fine. And now we have that here. Now we can either drag it into the timeline or we can just double click on it and that'll jump us across into Fusion. So all we have currently is our media out node. So what we wanna do first is drag a text node onto it. Super, super simple. So we're just going to just grab the text node here I'm gonna click and drag it down, and we're going to drag it down over across to our media out. And for this entire process, you can just make sure the media out node is the one displayed in the viewer. And by doing that, you can just click and drag it to the viewer, and that's all you're gonna need. So let's start off by creating something, and let's just call this cinematic. Cinematic title. I've been struggling with spelling cinematic lately. It's just been typing it a lot for this tutorial. And we're just gonna bump up, that's way too big. All right, that's what she said. Uh, we're gonna just bring that up a little bit, adjust the tracking. And again, because we're gonna be saving this as a template and we can adjust all this later, it's not super important, but we just kinda wanna, you know, just have it a particular way to start. All right, so now that we have our text here, we're gonna do one more thing. So we're gonna hit our shift space bar it's gonna bring up our tool selection and we're just gonna type in transform. We're gonna add a transform node in between the two there as well. And we'll get to that one a little bit later. So what we wanna do now is start animating this sort of blur in and out effect that we created. So where it sort of starts to blur the letters in and out, we wanna start doing that now. And to do that is really, really simple. So we're just gonna go over here 
and we're going to head on over to our inspector for the text node and we're gonna right click in this styled text box here. And you can see we've got a lot of different options. And this is where the power of Fusion comes in is because we can animate text on per letter basis and add, you know, different sort of animations, different sort of effects based on the text. So what we're gonna do here is add an effect called a follower. And so we can right click and click follower and nothing happens, you can't see anything, but you can see that this little diamond here has been keyframed. What a follower is, is basically you can animate tools and it's going to animate the text on a per character basis. It's kind of complicated, we'll show you what, you mean, what we mean. So what you'll notice is by activating that, you can now head on over to modifiers, which was grayed out previously. Clicking on that, you can see now we have our follower one. And we have pretty much everything else that we had available under the tools, all right? So we have all this sort of same stuff, but this is under the modifier. And that's because anything we edit under this follower modifier is going to animate on a per character basis. Anything we change here, is going to, under the tools, will change the entire thing. So it gets a bit complicated, but hopefully you guys are following along. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is, under the follower modifier, so make sure you're under modifiers, under the follower, we're gonna head on over to the paintbrush or the shading sort of icon here. We're gonna animate the softness parameter under the modifier. And the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is make it uniform. So currently we have it so that the X and the Y don't act together. So just click those dots to reset. So what we're gonna do is either one of them, X or Y, double click in that box, and you're gonna hit the equals sign on your keyboard and hit enter. This is gonna allow you to do an expression. All we're literally gonna do is click and drag to the Y, all right? And all that means is that X equals Y. So if I increase Y, it increases X as well. Really, really simple. So let's start animating this so we can actually see what's going on. So for this title, what we're gonna want is you're gonna want it to sort of be on the screen for at least a second. So 24 frames a second. So we're gonna move up to frame 24 and then we're gonna set a keyframe. I'm gonna set a keyframe, just hit both, just to make sure they're both keyframe. And then we're gonna move forward about a second. We're gonna bump this up to, let's say 200. And now nothing, now everything's gone. And if you move through this, you can see that it's starting to blur. So we have one second where everything sort of just blurs but it's all doing it uniformly at once. So we need to animate it at the start. So to do that, we're gonna scroll right to the top here under the modifier and gonna go back to this main page here, the timing. Now you can, what we'll do is we'll move just to the start of this blurring so we can start sort of playing around with it. So now you can see that currently it's doing all characters. We can change it to select only specific characters. We can also change the order. So currently it's left to right we could do right to left, inside out, outside in, blah, 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 completely random. And we can change what sort of delay there is. We can change, make it so there is no delay between each character, between the first and last. You know, there's a lot of options here. But the most important thing we're looking at here is the delay. It's currently set to zero. So, which means that there is no delay between each character blurring. It's just all happening uniformly. But if we bump that up a bit, all of a sudden we see something happening. And because of the way we've got it, it's left to right, we have this cool little effect here where it's sort of blurring on like so. And of course, if we change it right to left, we'd get the opposite effect. We go inside out, we get it like that and it would slowly blur out like so. So pretty, pretty cool. What we're gonna do for this one is completely random. So we don't have as much control over it, but it kind of gives us this real cool like little fade on effect. Yeah, nice slow computer. Look at that go. And what you can notice though is even though we keyframed the softness, all right? So when we were under our modifier, all right, we go back down to the softness that we created, the keyframe is at frame 48. But you can notice that it continues to animate. And that's because the initial animation is applied to the very first character, which is one of these ones which has disappeared already. Looking at this, it is the N, all right? So that animation ends early but the rest of them will continue on until the animation is completed. And that's why this is extremely powerful because it means that we can edit this text after the fact and have the exact same effect over and over and over. So the last thing I wanna do, all right, cause we're nearly done. That's how simple this tutorial is, is we're just gonna animate a little bit of a scale in and out. So what we're gonna do is 
we're going to shift to the transform node. I'm going to set a keyframe just at the start. So at the start of this sort of animation where it starts blurring, we're going to set a keyframe at 24 and then we're going to go to 48 or actually, no, let's just jump forward a bit. Let's go to frame 70. And what we're going to do is we're just going to move up a little bit. Let's go to 1.2. So not a whole lot. All right. But basically what it means is we're going to have a little bit of motion as it sort of blurs in and out just a little bit. In fact, you know what? I think 1.2 is just a little bit too much. Let's go 1.1. We just want a subtle, a little bit of extra, you know, pizzazz in this kind of animation. So there we go. Nice, cool little blurring in and out like so. And let's just quickly, you know, add a little bit of a smoothness to that animation. So we're just going to open up our spline editor, select our transform node here. We're going to hit this little button. It's going to zoom to fit everything. And we're literally just going to drag select those two, shift S on your keyboard. It's going to smooth those bad boys out, make it a nice and just a more pleasing animation to watch. Beautiful. Look at that. That's exactly what we want. So if we go back to the edit page, you know, we can drag our footage down, sweet as. We can drag our title down, nice. And we're gonna have our animation exactly how we want it. The thing is we can't change the color, we can't treat it like a title because it's a fusion composition. So we can only edit all these parameters in fusion if it decides to switch across in here if I select text. That's how we would change the color, all right? And then we'd finally see that here. That's a bit slow, that takes a long time. So how do we save this out as a preset that we can just drag and drop on every project that we use from this point on? Well, it's really, really simple. Pretty much what we're going to do is you're going to drag select all the nodes involved in creating the effect except the media out node. We do not need that one. This is the one that just tells the editor, the edit tab, what to display. So we don't need that one. So we're going to drag select the text node and the transform node. We're going to right click on one of the nodes. Doesn't matter which one, it's not important. It just brings up a different menu than if you were to right click in the sort of grid. And we're going to go to macro, okay? Not settings, which you may have seen in other videos. We're going to go to macro and I'm going to go create macro. And holy jeebus Christ, there is just a lot of numbers on the screen. You're probably freaking out a bit. I freak out a little bit too. I will confess that I don't know this macro tool thing 100%. As you can see, it is chock-a-block full of stuff. Pretty much every parameter available to you in the editor in Fusion is available here. We don't want every single thing available because you're just going to end up breaking it, basically. You just want the basic things. You know, we want color, we want text size, font, that sort of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to rename our tool. So let's call this Mist Cinematic. Like I said, man, I am struggling with that word today. Title. Yeah, that'll look cool. And what we're going to do is we're going to check the output of the text node. Again, I might be right or wrong about which ones to click. I'm just showing you the ones that I use. Leave a comment down below if maybe you don't need this one. I'm not 100% sure. The rest we're going to ignore. So we don't need anything from image. So we're just going to drop that. The rest we need is from the text. So this is the text node. All right. So we're going to highlight the text. Literally, we want the, pretty much the first six. So we're going to hit style text, then obviously font, because we want to be able to change the font style. We want to be able to change it from bold, italic, etc. Now we want to change color. Now, for some reason, you do have to change color for red, green, blue, and alpha. Um, I just, you just got to do it. And you want size. We want to be able to change the size after the fact. Tracking, so we can adjust the spacing between the characters. And honestly, that's pretty much the majority of what you need. You can scroll down and have a look at all the different things that you can control and all that sort of stuff. As far as I'm concerned, they're the most important for dragging, dropping titles. And all you get to do now is go close, right? Pretty, pretty simple. What it's gonna do is ask you to save changes. Yes, we do. We wanna save it. We wanna use it again. So we're gonna save it out. And it's gonna direct you to your Fusion directory, wherever that is, whether it's a Mac or Windows, it's gonna drop you to your macros folder. Hopefully it looks the same on Windows as it does a Mac. It should do. Thing is, we don't wanna save it to macros. We wanna save it somewhere else. We wanna save it to templates. So we're gonna to go to templates. And then we're going to move over and we've got two different ones. We've got fusion and edit. We're going to go to the edit one titles. And as you can see here, you've got missed cinematic title and we're going to click on that and we're just going to save it. We're going to go replace. Well, you're not going to go replace. I'm going to go replace. And that's it guys. Now to see that change and take effect, you will need to close DaVinci Resolve down. So that's that. 
But once you've done that, you can open DaVinci Resolve up, go to your FX library, and under your titles, you're gonna have your missed cinematic title that you can drag down. And then once it loads, how good. And you can go through and change it. So we can do a shameless plug. And, you know, we can change the color and the size. Sorry if you guys can't read that. And then we can change the font to whatever we want as well some cool little fonts here change the tracking all very cool and it's all going to animate off perfectly in time now to have it smoothly come on i literally just command t control t add a quick transition blows in blows out and that is how you create your own cinematic title in davinci resolve that you can use over and over again and hopefully you learned a little bit more about how to edit text in Fusion, I really recommend you guys play around with those modifiers. There's a bunch out there. The follower one is the one I tend to use the most just because how cool is that? But definitely more out there. So that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. We do drop tutorials, try to drop at least one or two a month, a bunch of tech videos, you know, whatever. That's what we do here. And yeah, until the next video, guys, I'll catch you guys later.